believe that our guest is ready to, to roll here. So let's bring Ryan in. Hey, Rick. Hello. How's it going? Great. How are you, Ryan? Oh, doing good. Doing good. What about you? <laughs> I'm just fine. And I'm excited to have you here tonight. When I was a kid, especially when I was a kid, uh, Sasquatch, Bigfoot was um, something that always kind of captivated my attention, especially when the $6 million man did battle with Bigfoot on, on ABC television. You're maybe a little too young to remember the excitement surrounding that, but I'm not. I'm I'm getting a little long in the tooth, so that was a big deal for me. And I'm excited to see that you have a new television series coming out. Um, tell us about that because it's it's focused on Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm uh, hosting producing a show called uh, Sasquatch University on the Wild TV Network, and. Uh, yeah, it came out this fall, and there's new episodes every uh, Monday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, uh, yeah, you're able to stream it any time on uh, Wild TV+. Plus. So it's been really cool getting to do and investigate Bigfoot here in Ontario. And, uh, yeah, it's just been a really cool uh, journey and a, you know, awesome ride. That's very, that is actually pretty cool. That sounds like a lot of fun, uh, you know, to be involved in a project like that. What is it that got you interested in Sasquatch and, and Bigfoot to begin with? Yeah. Um, what, what did it for me is when, when I was, uh, you know, just a little kid, um, I, I was really into the TV show Finding Bigfoot on Animal Planet. And I was probably 11 or 12 years old. And every week I'd be so excited to, to see the new episode and, and learn more about Bigfoot. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. That there could be a undiscovered primate or or you know homino or hominid uh new new species out there that we didn't know about yet and so many people had seen and every week there were these new witnesses with these incredible stories and uh, i just got me super interested that way and i spend summers up in uh, algonquin park in ontario here and uh mm -hmm. yeah i i, I go out um or you know when i was a kid i'd go out and try to do my own investigations and, and do uh, you know everything I can to learn about Bigfoot. And by the time I got to university, I met some people that were really into Bigfoot too. And we started going out in the woods uh, outside of Peterborough and Ontario and doing our you know Bigfoot investigations. So uh, that, that's kind of how we got into it. And the Trent Sasquatch Society got started, and then that eventually kind of led to uh, us doing the TV show now. So it's been awesome. So you're part of a, a, a much larger community of Bigfoot enthusiasts and investigators. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. So that's the the Trent Sasquatch Society, and then there's a lot of great uh, researchers too in Ontario that that I've gotten to know pretty well, and they're they're awesome guys, and, and it's super cool getting to share information and, and you know kind of learn from them too. So I mean, obviously, um, there's folklore associated with all of this, and let me just see if I can find your website so I can put it up on the screen here. I had it up earlier. Well, I'll just punch it in again. It's Sasquatch University, right? Yeah, SasquatchUniversity.com. And, and there's a form on there for anyone uh, watching who has had an encounter and wants to report it to us uh, at the bottom of the website there. Okay. So as I was going to say, the, um, the as much as there's folklore and you know, myth, I guess, and entertainment surrounding all of this. There is, a, I, I guess, I take it a, a serious element to what you are uh, embarking on here. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, um, you know, very serious about the research we do. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of people, when they think about Bigfoot, they think about kind of the things you just mentioned, like, you know, the entertainment side and shows, and but not so much the actual evidence out there supporting that there are real bigfoots so um you know obviously that's the, the hundreds of thousands of eyewitnesses around the world that have reported things and, and seen stuff and there's even a uh, dna study going on right now at uh, carolina university that a friend of mine darby orcutt is doing right now that uh, you know people it's been announced now so i'm able to say i suppose but it's it's uh really cool that that's like a university uh funded study that's taking place so I think it's awesome. And, and there's, uh, you know, a lot of. So they're doing some that. sort of DNA testing. 
Yeah, yeah, they're uh, doing a test on a lot of pieces of, uh, you know, Bigfoot hairs and things like that, alleged pieces of DNA evidence that, that haven't been tested yet. And um, so they're going to take a look at those and, and, and see what the results yield. So I can't wait. And so you'll have that information on your program as well? That's yeah, okay. I suppose once it's it's published and everything, like, um, you know, I think it's North Carolina State is the university doing the, the study. So, you know, the, obviously all that information where they put it is, is up to them. But, but I suppose we could put a little something on the website with a link to it or, or something like that. Wow. I mean, the stuff that I see online, the videos and so on, some of them obviously are straight up hoaxes. Other ones um, kind of blurry. Uh, not entirely convincing, but in your travels and with all of the, the work that you've done, have, have you seen evidence or cumulatively, are you like uh, absolutely a believer that Sasquatch is a, is a real thing? Yeah, I think it's important to leave a little bit of room for skepticism, but, uh, but I'm like, you know, 90 or 95% full believer, you know? So, um, I haven't fully seen one yet, but we've had some pretty crazy encounters out there that I really just can't explain. So I don't know, you know, what caused that. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like with throwing rocks and things like that. So, so I, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean you know, throwing what, rocks? Like a Sasquatch would throw a rock at somebody? Yeah, that's a, I guess, a common trait of kind of a Sasquatch. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of uh, maybe suspected as a, like a, a territorial defense type of thing where, you know, they don't want someone there. And a lot of people report, uh, you know, either seeing them and then having rocks thrown or, or having rocks thrown in areas that, you know, a lot of other people see Bigfoot. So there's a huge uh, correlation there. And we were pretty spooked when when that happened to us on uh, the season of our show because it's uh, it's freaky when you're out there and, you you know, you hear things, you know, getting, getting thrown nearby and, you know, you have therms and there's, you know, no one else out there. You're way out in the woods and uh, it's pitch black. It's It's pretty scary. So, um, so you know, where did that happen? Yeah, that was in Gray Bruce County. And we actually had another incident. We're not 100% sure if it was a, you know, a tree branch or a, a rock, but there was no wind. So we're still kind of second guessing that one. So I, but the other one, we were like, really pretty sure they were rocks. And so that, that was really freaky, but that was in Gray Bruce. And the other was up in Conklin Park. So, so now, uh, both would... places we got a lot of reports from. Okay, so this is in Ontario. I've been looking at some maps of um, Sasquatch sightings, and it seems like the majority are sort of out on the western side of Canada and the United States. Uh, why would why would we see clusters of it more out there? And and I guess by extension, do you think there's got to be more than one Bigfoot, especially at this stage? Because if there was only one, he'd be awfully awfully old at this point. Uh, so there must be. You know, they must be having families or reproducing, uh, I would think, at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, you know, definitely uh, the, the you know, most common uh, theory is, you know, to why there's so many sightings and, and people seeing, you know, different shapes and sizes and colors of Bigfoots out there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, you know, very uh, well believed, I guess, amongst the research community that, that there is obviously more than one. And, uh, you know, that they probably do work in family units because that's been reported. People have seen that. So uh, it, it's pretty interesting that, you know, it, it really seems that's how they operate and that there, you know, seems to be a, a fair bit of them. Um, the West Coast definitely kind of gets the, the best reputation for uh, having all the Bigfoots out there. But, you know, if you, you look at a lot of sighting maps, there's all across North America and so many other continents in the world. Uh, you know, reports of these creatures being seen in what, Ontario what, is, is very good for that. What in your estimation, what kind of creatures are these? Are we talking about some sort of um, primate, the uh, apes, human beings, missing links? What, what, what do you think they are? If they indeed do exist. You know what, when, when I first got into the subject, I was very, um, I, I suppose, kind of stuck to the theory that that it's a you know a flesh and blood ape type of creature that that was you know probably kind of the most common one still today but i think a lot of people have kind of started to shift and subscribe to the the interdimensional bigfoot theory which is one i've kind of too um have, have maybe uh 
given a little more credibility to. I've talked to some people that have had encounters that that have those uh, elements within them. And, you know, I, I find it pretty interesting. And so I, I'm very open to that side as well. I'm not really, um, I'm kind of on the fence between those two. And I, I don't know which one it is. I'm still trying to figure that out. And that's what we try to figure out. Dimensional oh. creatures, like they can like uh, phase yeah. shift or quantum leap or something. Yeah, I suppose um, the, the theory is that there's a sort of a fourth dimension that they're able to phase into and, you know, that we're not able to see them uh, when, I guess, uh, they're, they're in that, that realm, so to speak. Uh, and I know that that probably sounds quite wild and out there, uh, but, but there's actually been a lot of sightings and reports that, that back that up. And, and alongside that, um, if you've ever heard of mind speak, like, like uh, I guess, Bigfoot's, telepathically speaking to, to people uh, out there in the woods. And I, you know, I know that sounds pretty nuts, but, but there's actually a lot of really credible people that have had these encounters. So it's something that at first I kind of thought, what, like, that's, that's crazy. How could that be? But the more people I've talked to, I, I'm like, huh, like it really does seem like there's something here. And there's a lot of really credible people that have said they've experienced this. So it's something I'm a lot more open to now. And there's a ton of other theories out there too. Uh, if you thought, you know, that one was maybe a little outside of the box, there's there's tons of other ones. And, you know, people saying um, they're, they're aliens, things like that, which I also believe is a possibility. My, my kind of view is that until we have one in a lab somewhere that's been properly reviewed by scientists, we, you know, we don't know exactly what these things are. So I think all possibilities are, are kind of open and with, uh, I guess, however many uh, reports uh, of each, or I guess to kind of back up each theory there are um I, I start to place more credibility in myself at least we have seen people make claims of having a bigfoot in captivity in the past and um, i found one thing online the other day as i was getting ready for this interview but i guess it would be your assertion that people who've made claims like that are probably just um uh, perpetrating a hoax maybe to get an extra 10 bucks out of somebody as they're driving down the highway and come to some Bigfoot exhibit or something. Right. Um, because from what I'm hearing from you at, to this point, we haven't actually had anybody with credible scientific credentials have a Bigfoot in captivity to, to actually really study um, this subject. Yeah. Yeah, no, no one's had one uh, in captivity to, um, I guess, review uh, by by proper scientists. And, and there's people online that that make claims of, you know, maybe having body parts or or having one tied up in their garage. Or, you know, like it's yeah. endless online with what you can find. You can find people that you know uh, make all kinds of claims on there. Um, but then obviously, when you you go to you know call or follow up, um, you 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 know the more of those uh, rabbit holes you go down, you you find that. Uh, what what they're saying online obviously isn't always the case is I uh, you know is true in many things um right. you know not just Bigfoot obviously there's a lot of uh, people online that you know say all kinds of things um, so you've probably uh, gone into the history a lot researched the history of Sasquatch Bigfoot and I I gather that the legend of Bigfoot really has its roots in First Nations um, history is that correct which is why we have the name sasquatch yeah that's right yeah so um you know it obviously uh settlers have been here uh i guess since uh what you know 1400s 1500s and uh yeah if if you you know there's a lot of uh historical accounts of encounters that, that you know date back through through those centuries but if you go way further back the uh, native american culture uh, has a, a huge history of, um, I guess, uh, oral accounts, you know, oral histories are, are very big. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if you look at those, this, this creature is very uh, prominent in many of those. So, you know, this goes back thousands and thousands of years. And uh, even on other continents, continents, um, there's a lot of reports that, that kind of, uh, I guess, have the, the same type of histories that, you know, go back uh, thousands and thousands of years obviously so it's not just something that's occurring uh or has occurred in, in north american uh native history if you you know look at um, siberia australia a lot of other continents too there, there's a lot of um 
yeah, these histories. So it's, it's pretty interesting that way. So what kind of footage do you rely on to do your television series? Footage provided by people who have had sightings, uh, providing material to you in addition, stuff that you're gathering as you go out into the woods yourself? Is that, is it a kind of a mix? I haven't seen the show, so I'm curious. Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, uh, when we go to film the show, we we use our own cameras and things, but but I, I'm sure you mean the, uh, you know, different piece, pieces of evidence people send in that we right. put in the show. And uh, so, so yeah, people will send in video evidence, photo evidence. We even got, uh, you know, my favorite piece, a really good howl that, that someone recorded and we sent to the Ministry of Natural Resources and they, they couldn't identify as a, a known animal. So that was very interesting to me. And uh, so, so in the show, we go and meet with all these people and, and you know, ask them about their encounters and, and try to learn what we can and, and follow up on the evidence and, and obviously play them in the show. So uh, I'm, you know, excited for people that are interested in the subject to get to go check those pieces of evidence out and, and really learn about, um, I guess, kind of what's gone on with, with Bigfoot here in Ontario and what continues to go on. So, um, yeah. And you are part of a community. I guess you're also even on your website, I see you're sort of encouraging um, students at universities to establish addition. There are clubs, I guess, at universities, and you'd like to see even more of these clubs established, I guess, to create a, a broader social network. Yeah, exactly. So when I was in university at Trent University in Peterborough, um, me and some friends started something called the Trent University Sasquatch Society. And that was a, a Sasquatch research group that, uh, you know, like a school club that has now reached over 300 members and is the biggest club at Trent. So it's, uh, it's been pretty cool. It's the cool. biggest club? It's the biggest yeah. one? Yeah, that's, that's okay. what I've been told. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, so there's 300 members. So it's, it's really grown since we started, obviously, with just maybe like 10 or 15 of us. And, uh, yeah, so so we really encourage uh, people at other universities to to start societies of their own that you know similar to ours, and and we would have researchers on Zoom come and, and give lectures, and, and you know the students could do kind of a, I guess like um like a Q and A type of thing with the researchers, and uh, it was really cool, and, and so many people were were able to learn more about about Bigfoot there at Trent, so it was just awesome. So, what kinds of of evidence have you uncovered yourself? Yeah, out there in the field, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I think the most interesting was probably the, the rocks I mentioned. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, the coolest thing for us is, is we're pretty fortunate The the news in Ontario really has taken an interest in, in what we've been doing over the past few years. And that's really allowed us to connect with people here in Ontario. So we get so many reports and that that really allows us to have um such a, a broad database of information of, of you know where reports are coming from when mm -hmm. um you know hot spots um so so that that really helps obviously because otherwise you're kind of looking for a needle in a haystack and to go in and check out some you know all the the information and um, pieces of evidence that that you know people haven't seen before the show uh, was was really cool and, and we would never have been able to to do that if it weren't for making all those connections and and going and, and you know seeing uh like you know the footprint evidence and videos and pictures sent in and the howl and uh so that's that's been the coolest thing for for me getting to check out the evidence here in ontario yeah and i see you are getting a lot of uh, attention coverage in even mainstream media global television did a report with you the toronto sun cbc news uh, the peterborough examiner uh, the Evan Solomon Show on iHeartRadio, News Talk 1010 with David Cooper, Nicola Valley Bigfoot Podcast, The Next Generation of Researcher, and uh, what's Bigfoot Backpacker Podcast? What's that? Uh, yeah, it's a, a Bigfoot podcast, um, you know, kind of kind of similar to the others where, uh, you know, you go on and, and talk about all things Bigfoot. I see. And Paranormal Almanac. Kurt yeah, gets a and, visit and, from the Trent Sasquatch Society. <laughs> yeah, and, and those were just the ones uh, we haven't actually updated, like the new section of the website in probably like a year and a half. So so those were really just um, kind of ones about the Trent Sasquatch Society when, when that kind of blew up in the news back in the day. Um, so yeah. there's been a lot more since then. 
and uh, we even had uh, we did something with like the New York Times a month or two ago, and oh, um, yeah. yeah. So so there's been a a lot since then, especially to do with the show, um, and it's just really helped us connect with so many people and gather so much information that uh, we would never have been able to find online, which has been been a huge help. Very interesting stuff. Who else works with you? Oops, I took you off the show there. Oops. There you go. You're back. Yeah, I'm back. Pull that down. <laughs> who, who else works on the show with you? Yeah, so my co-host, uh, Joel Porter, uh, awesome guy. And he's now the, the president of the Trent Sasquatch Society. I graduated last year, so he's taken over now. And they're doing really well. Um, so I, I'm glad that even, you know, now that I'm gone and, uh, and doing the show uh, full time now. I, uh, you know, the, the legacy of the Trent Sasquatch Society is still carrying on and they're doing a really good job. What do you think the positive impact from Sasquatch, the, the Bigfoot tail, how does it impact our society? And do you think that the overall impact is positive or negative? I guess that would really be the question. Yeah, I think it's positive. You know, I think we're kind of getting to a place where um, people in the world are, are maybe uh, a little more accepting and, and maybe don't show so much stigma towards subjects that are, uh, you know, kind of been a bit more taboo, obviously like Bigfoot, where a lot of people just kind of think it's a, a joke or, you know, something to be laughed at. And there, there's really a lot going on there. And, you know, I think a real comparable is kind of the UFO subject. Um, just just a few years ago you had the u.s government releasing videos of ufos and, and saying that they're here and we don't know what they are and i think that's um kind of a huge step not just within um the, the ufo subject alone but the paranormal subject alone and i think um it'll be a good thing for society to kind of uh i, I guess know and, and understand what a lot of these things are that have kind of just been considered legends for such a long time or, or things that are laughed at because you know before the u.s government released that footage you know you probably would have gone ufos like ha 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 or you know they must be crazy but now the government's releasing videos of them so um you know obviously it's something that uh i guess has the potential to, to change a lot in our world and society i suppose but i think it's important for people to, to know about so are you into the just the first season of the show right now yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a 13 episode season. And I think there's, um, I think we're a bit past that the halfway or, or I guess kind of actually near the end, because I think uh, I'm not sure which, I think maybe eight or nine comes out this week. But yeah, there's, you know, always a new episode on, on Mondays. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited for people to, to check it out and see what we were able to go investigate because it was really cool getting to do. And uh, That's very cool. yeah, so yeah. And so again, what network is this seen on? Yeah, the Wild TV network. And that, that's a specialty channel in Canada. Is it seen in the States at all? Um, yeah, you can get it in the States, but I, I think uh, you have to get it through Wild TV Plus, like the streaming version in the States. And then I think in Canada, in some parts of Europe, they have like the cable channel version. I see. And so not available online, like on YouTube or anything like that at this point uh not on youtube but um yeah like i think anyone uh online can just get it through wild tv plus uh and i, I think it's just like four dollars a month or something like that so uh oh so you can yeah. subscribe to yeah, that those... on just on online you can get it online by subscribing over yeah. the internet okay let me just show people i just found it online here so i'll just bring it up on the screen so people can see where they can watch your show so there it is there so you don't need cable you just need a subscription online to wild tv is that it there wild tv plus.ca yeah that's it yeah yeah that's the spot cool so you've got you can sign up there and then you're just uh, you're one of the shows in the lineup yeah that's very cool yeah you just uh Log on, I guess, and, and, and type in Sasquatch University, and you'll be able to see uh, everything we got up to and, and us looking for Bigfoot for 13 episodes. So hopefully people check it out and enjoy. How did you get the TV deal? Were you like in, in school learning about what? Like broadcasting, journalism, something completely unrelated, and you just fell into this? Or how did that happen? 
Yeah, I did um, Canadian cultural studies with a, I guess I had a specialization in film and media, a part of my degree, but that, that actually didn't really have anything to do with that. We more just kind of fell into it uh, when I was done university. And I, I guess it was kind of maybe our last month there at university and we got put in touch with sort of like a media company that, that does some stuff with, with music in our university. Um, and they were like, oh, you should try to do one of those Bigfoot shows or something. You know, it seems like the news really likes you guys. It's like, yeah. And uh, they were kind of like, but you go sell the show, Ryan, and, uh, you know, uh, make it happen. And, and I didn't really know how to or what to do, but I, I just kind of figured it out and went along. And then a few months later, we were uh, in touch with Wild TV. And, um, yeah, we actually didn't really end up, uh, I guess, working with, with the company originally. But we still had Wild TV interest in, in making a show with us. So, um yeah, I, I actually uh, incorporated a production company to to do it, and uh, yeah, that and then went and, and made the show, and you know, figured out all the contract stuff with the network and all the sponsors, and um, yeah, it's been a lot of work uh, from there, but but it's definitely been worth it. And now that the show is uh, on TV, it's it's super cool to to check out and see that you know all the work um, I guess paid off, and and you know people are are able to that have an interest can, can go to a place and, and kind of learn with us on, on this journey. So I'm glad people are, are able to do that now. That's very cool. It's, it's an exciting journey. And uh, I know from having been in the broadcasting industry all my career that it's, it's certainly challenging, especially as an independent producer, but you made it, man, you've got yourself a TV series. That's very cool. Yeah. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad. I hope people uh, enjoy watching it and, you know, hopefully when they're done, uh, are, are Bigfoot believers just like us at the end of the show. So, yeah, I hope that happens for people. All right. Very excited to see one of the episodes. I'm going to have to subscribe and uh, and get access so I can watch your show. Um, just once again, Ryan, is there anything else you'd like to to add or think that I might have been missing? No, I, I suppose not. I, I guess we, we really kind of covered everything there. But, uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, yeah, just a, a reminder for um, you know anyone that's seen a Bigfoot or, or thinks they've had an encounter to go to our website, SasquatchUniversity.com, and uh, please report it, and we'll uh, get back to you and, and check it out. And uh, for anyone that wants to watch the show, Mondays at uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wild TV. Okay, and I'm just going to bring your website up one more time for people so that you can see how to contact Ryan. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter, if you have any evidence – any video or I don't know if you have a Bigfoot tied up in your garage and uh, you're inclined to share him or her with the world, give Ryan a, a call or contact him by direct messaging right there on their website, which is at SasquatchUniversity.com. Very cool stuff. Ryan, thank you so much, my friend. It's It's been a delight. Yeah, you too, Rick. Thanks for having me on. Okay, my pleasure. And with that, folks, we'll take a quick break. Um, we'll let Ryan sign off here, and we'll come back on the other side with more news of the day. Don't go away. Exile. The Knights of Malta. Maverick News. Join us. The world is watching. And since it's Sunday night and we were just talking about Bigfoot, we might as well stay in that vein. <laughs> I just, I came... Just by chance, I came across this today and I thought, well, I've, if we're going to talk about Bigfoot, we have to give the giant squirmy wormy um, his due as well, whatever the heck this is. I do not know what this, I don't, I don't know what this is and I don't know much of anything anymore. What is this? What is it? Giant squirmy wormy. If 
Fire in the hole. It's got to be explosives, right? Under the ground. Looks like a giant gopher. I don't know. Was that a scene from Dune with the giant squirmy wormies under the under the earth? With that, do you remember Dune? They had the things that. Oh my god! Never liked that movie. Never liked that sh series actually much, to be honest. Oh, what's I got that uh, magic hockey stick too. Since I didn't get to show you this this week, we got so busy with other stuff. Let me see if I can. I'll find the link here. I sent it to myself as part of, here it is here. The magic hockey stick. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, look at this. This is um, Calgary player, I guess, loses his stick when he's checked. And. Look what happens to the hockey stick. Oops. Okay. Got to bring this up. This is the strangest thing. There has to be some explanation.